today. We Never. have, and we have, and she's given us some of her time, and we appreciate it. Of course, we're talking about the Adjutant General of Maryland, General Linda Singh. Nice to see you. Absolutely. Thank you, Deborah. Well, Donna was quoting uh, the stepfather of Freddie Gray, who said, as she said so poignantly, "Come in peace this weekend, or don't come at all." And I would imagine you could not agree more with that. I actually, I absolutely do. I feel like. We need to be able to express our voices, but we need to do it in a very peaceful manner. And I think that's extremely important. If we want our voices to be heard, if we want the message to be heard, the only way that we can do that is, is through peace. And so I, I urge everyone that, you know, be respectful, come out and, and share your perspective, but do it in such a way that it allows us to move forward from this. It allows us to learn, you know, something of how we can first off heal. And so, and my heart goes out to, to all the folks and, you know, I've spent a lot of time, you know, with the governor, as well as with the mayor, as well as with the commissioner. And, you know, it's been tough being here this week. Uh, and what's interesting is I know people say, well, aren't you going to be glad to go home? Well, when I go home, I turn around and come right back to work here in Baltimore. And so I would like for us to be able to get back to some setting of normalcy. But I agree, you know, we need to, we need to be thinking about peace. And to me, we can move our agendas forward as long as we do it in a pe peaceful manner. When do you see normalcy? So I, I would say that, you know, we see normalcy when, when uh, things have calmed down, when my boss, you know, my bosses, <laughs> the governor and the mayor, actually feel like it, it, that we are at a state in which, um, you know, we can really start reducing uh, our presence here. But uh, what I would say is very interesting in terms of the National Guard, and, and I know folks say, well, you know, when are you guys going to go back, you know, when are you guys going to pull out? Mm -hmm. What we need to remember is that, you know, for the National Guard, when we pull out, we go back to our armories, which are here either in the city, which are in the county, or which are in the state, and then we turn around and go back to work here in the city, in the county, or the state, and we go back to our homes here in the city, the county, or in the state, and that's extremely important. Because we're part, you know, we are members of the community as well. And so it's not like we turn around and, and we're going to just leave because we're here. This is, this is our home. But you have a footprint all over the world. You've been in Kosovo. You've Absolutely. been in Afghanistan. So now you're here in Baltimore in this unprecedented state of emergency. So how, for you and for the other members of the Guard, how does that, and I don't want to call it a war zone here, but clearly we are dealing with uh, many complicated issues. How does this particular detail compare to these war zones in Afghanistan and Kosovo? So first off, this is not a war zone, right? This is our community and our home, so it's not a war zone. And thank God that it's not a war zone. Um, and, and, and I say that because if we were in other places, uh, we would have to live in fear every single day and, you know, it's through the rights of this country, it's through the individuals who wear the uniform that allows us to be free, it's through the Constitution that allows us to be free and have free speech. So when I think of, you know, what does it mean and how does it compare, when we go into other countries, we have to really learn the cultures, we have to understand the individuals that we are going to support, because in many cases, you know, we find ourselves having to figure out, you know, where's the right and where's the wrong. And, you know, we can't make judgment on that. We have to do what we know is right to protect the people and to protect property. And, and what I think is extremely important is that, you know, my folks that are here, my airmen and my soldiers, what I think is extremely important is that they are very well suited to be able to have conversations with the community. Because not only do we live here, but when we go to other countries, we use the same skills to be able to start a conversation about the differences. And I think it allows us to grow as individuals when we start understanding and respecting differences of each other. And you feel a great level of responsibility to do that, not just to protect people, but to speak with people. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that I, f I feel like uh, my legacy is to be able to be a voice for our young, to be a voice for the middle age you know, folks that, you know, like myself, I'd say. I'm kind of young, though. <laughs> and um, I, I would say that, you know, I need to be that voice. I want to be a role model that they can look at because I did not come from a, a place of, where, of lavish and, and all of that. I came from a place of poverty. I grew up in the country. I didn't necessarily grow up in the city, but I grew up in poverty. 
You know, I didn't have running water in my house. I didn't have an indoor bathroom for the first nine years of my life. That's the way I lived. That was home, and I was happy. And, um, and so knowing what it's like to, to grow up where you want more for yourself. I want to be able to, to be the representative of the, of the individual that wants that. And so it's not just me coming in and saying, you know, I'm representing the garden, I'm representing the military. I want to represent the community, and I want to do it in a way that they can be proud of, and they can say, she's put a face on the military, she's put a face on our National Guard, that we know they are the community, they're coming in to help us, they love us, and guess what? They're going to be with us, whether it's for through a snowstorm, whether it's through a flood or an earthquake. That's important to me. And I ask all of my troops and all of my airmen to set that same standard and that same set of values. Thank you. Thank you for coming Thanks in and so spending the time with us. We do thank appreciate you. it. General Sting. Absolutely. Thank you. Back to you all. Am I, am I allowed to stand and applaud? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to meet you in person and, and to hear you speak a little more at length. Thank you very much, General. I think, I think we both told her what a, an amazing job she yeah. really has been doing. And talk about a role model for girls and boys. You got that right. Right? You got that right.